This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. Just this is stop. a sham. <laughs> <laughs> it's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Friday, people. Yeah, there was a little hesitation. No, no, no. I knew. You I was, I was trying to think of something clever. Yeah. You know, like when you have a joke and you're like, just bury yeah. it, you know. Yeah, see, sometimes you go to that joke well and there's nothing in there. There was like, nothing in the well. Right I went down there and it was empty. empty. Little little Timmy was in there. Hey there. <laughs> How are we feeling? How are you feeling on Friday? Good Friday. It's Kelly's birthday coming up soon. Yes. We're really and excited. And Kelly's not sitting there, so you yeah. just pointed in an empty chair with an off uh, computer. And can we get this out of the way? Not out of the way, but David, our stage manager, is leaving. I know this is an end of the show thing, but we love you, buddy. Well, I, so I'm good. making everybody work. We're going to miss you. Really, love it's, you, it's David. sad when good people. Uh, leave a production, but he's moving right. on to bigger and better things, yeah. but we love you. Absolutely. All right, so let's get to it, guys. Kanye West, that's not him, that's David. <laughs> Kanye West sat down with Fox News host Tucker Carlson for a wide-ranging interview where he addressed the controversy over wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt at a Paris Fashion Week show this week, okay? So Kanye said the decision to wear the shirt was based on a, quote, gut instinct, but as an artist, he said he doesn't have to give an explanation. As for the controversy, Kanye said it stems from the idea of a black man wearing something he wasn't supposed to wear. Kanye linked the latest backlash to his support for former President Trump. Let's watch. They basically said that I would be killed uh, for uh, wearing the hat. I had a, a, someone call me last night and said anybody wearing a White Lives Matter shirt is going to be greenlit and that means that they're going to beat them up if they wear it. And I'm like, you know, okay, green light me then. All right, so I got to put this. So when I was reading this, it doesn't really explain how Kanye explained something. I'm not making excuses for him. I want to get your guys' opinion. But if you watch the interview, which I watched the first half, I didn't even watch the whole thing, he gives a point, which actually might be a point, and it goes off into other universes to back up that point. So when I'm reading something, I'm like, well, that's not really what he said. It's kind of what he said. So I encourage you to watch the interview. Again, not sticking up for Kanye, but his mind, Al, something about it is like watching a train wreck, but uh, it, it's intriguing at right. the least. I mean, he talks in like, in almost like, you know, figure eight circles where he'll make a point he'll go around the circle come back and then he'll say something about the point and you're like oh we're still talking about that and then he goes off somewhere else what he's saying is hard to follow uh and, and i feel like if you are going to wear a white lives matter shirt you should probably have an answer for why you're doing it even if the answer is this is what i believe in and if that's a problem, then don't follow me. I can accept that answer. I can accept any, if you say, I didn't even look at this. I just put this on because I know it makes people mad and I like to be an agitator. I can hear that out too. But when you, you, you take something that you know is going to be this volatile and you have no explanation for why you're doing it, it just reeks to me of showmanship without any substance, and that's my issue. It's like a house without a foundation. Yes. Yeah, to me, if you're gonna be a provocateur and you're gonna have a point, like he compared himself to Andy Kaufman, who was an abstract performance artist, you gotta have a point. Without that, you're a troll. At this point, I feel like we shouldn't give Kanye a lot of time anymore on our show. And I say that I love his music, but again, at this point, he's saying nonsensical things. Does he have points in them? Yes. But then he goes off on crazy tangents that make no sense, and so to me, at this point, I'm tuning him down because he doesn't have an influence over me anymore. I don't want to hear the numbers. But are you intrigued to watch when he's on camera for a sit-down interview? Are you intrigued? Yes. 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 And that's the so thing. that that means yes. he will never go away if he doesn't want to. He drives public conversation, whether you to like it where, or not. Though? Where is he driving it to? But, Nowheresville. It's like what you said. He's just doing this, and we're all kind of following him along, and we all look like sheep. Stop it. Stop following him. Stop having him on until he, to me, gets some help. All right, so another point he brought up, Kanye West wasn't done there. He also brought up Lizzo. Let's have a look. When Lizzo loses 10 pounds and announces it, the bots, they attack her for losing weight because the media wants to put out a perception that being overweight is the new goal when it's actually unhealthy. What, can I ask? Yeah. I've noticed this also. Yeah. Why do you think they would want to promote unhealthiness among the population? It's a genocide of the black race. They want to kill us in any way they can. So, 
Again, did he have a point there? Yes. Was there a point within yes. there? Yes. There was an interesting seed, and I thought, where's this going? He's right. Body positivity is somewhat dangerous when you say they're, they're actually unhealthy. And then he goes into genocide of the black people. It, he loses me. And at that point, I'm like, why am I continually listening to his points, waiting for them to make sense? Well, I, I, you know, I don't even know if he had a point. He had an idea that he failed to analyze That's properly. everything he does now. What, what we're doing, because if we want to go like, oh, well, we don't want to glorify people being overweight. Well, we don't want to have the more difficult conversation of the fact that the poor people in our country have access to terrible food. Yes. Starchy full of carbs. We desert, do not pay yes. people what they deserve. We do not allow them to live close to places that have good food. If we're, how many Whole Foods are around us right now? There's like two. Mm -hmm. And how many else, how many are in, you know, Aurora or Five Points? I mean, there's a, this is a conversation that people don't want to have. And because of that, it just goes into Lizzo. So if you want to talk about Lizzo and somebody having their own personal issues with their body as we all do throughout this journey with this body we can do that that's a simple conversation people know Lizzo but the much harder conversation that they had a huge platform to have is how do we get people access to better food and better health care and he's not ready to, to have that conversation he's not prepared to have that that's conversation. Right. but neither is the American public you make the exact perfect point in my mind and I know other people are gonna have a difference with that that's the point we should be talking about not endorsing that it's good for you right right like the biggest beautiful slogan that represents a lot of our country it doesn't necessarily translate or equate to health right. the real issue is can those people in the lower class areas get the food that they need to make them healthy that's the question but if you bring that up people don't want to talk about that you're sexist you're uh, shame body shaming you're all the labels and people want to shut that conversation down in a way Kanye brings up some things and again I'm not defending him he right. brings up some topics that are taboo to talk about and the society that we live in today makes it that way but he doesn't have a follow-up like I the, agree with you if we would have just watched that first part you would have said he's got a point yeah. then he follows up and right. you're like we're, we're in the, another planet have said what Al said about the food deserts and that's a yeah, true point and, he did it but the food deserts is only half of the coin the other half of the coin is people's mental health and if you are fat shaming people that literally cannot have access to the foods right. that will make them healthier that do not have access to the things that will make them feel better about themselves piling on and then calling them fat and lazy that is a psychological weapon that's used against people so the biggest beautiful movement did have a point it was saying if this is where you're at right now, you don't need to feel terrible about yourself. We, but the second half of that is now, here's how to feel better yes. right. physically. Yes. Right, right, right. So I do Mentally understand where physically. the biggest beautiful comes from, and it does serve a very necessary point, because if you were not feeling good about yourself physically, to be then called names publicly and be have uh, things assigned to your character like you're lazy, is just like doubling down. Absolutely. And I think people who do things like that aren't having a conversation, right? right? Yeah. They're, they're wanting out of that conversation. I got it. We're moving on. Okay, so according to Megan Kelly, an emotional affair is much worse than a physical affair. On her podcast, Megan and her guests were speculating that Tom Brady and Giselle's reported marriage troubles were about more than just football, adding that women are often triggered by men having emotional affairs. Megan agreed, saying that she'd rather her husband have a one-night stand with a woman than sit and cry with her. Hmm. I didn't so where where were you at? You're, you're kind of, well, you kind of just, uh, while I was reading, you kind of looked at that like I was Kanye. I know. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't mean that way. I just meant that when women are triggered by men who have, I think people are triggered when people have affairs, period. I don't but what's no, worse, like Megyn Kelly said, would you rather, knock on wood, hypothetical, an ex-boyfriend, we only bring you, an ex-boyfriend cheat on you or find out he's watching Armageddon crying with another girl? I think I'd rather have them be physical. Yeah. Absolutely, the, because the, I'll be really honest. The emotional, you've lost it. You've lost if you if they're emotionally together, you've lost. That's what I got with them in the first place. You're gone. Anyone could hook up, but that's different. Huh? I completely agree. Am I weird? To no, that? no, no, no. Because I'm now I'm looking at you like you're Kanye. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of stuck on this one because both are bad, right? Both are bad. But yeah, I want to I want to hear you work through this process, Jeff, because my thoughts really quickly is just the emotional cheating is like if we do emotionally cheat and then actually physically cheat, it would be the planning that got me. Like mm -hmm. if she was like, I'll be a DBL at this time. So we like just knowing you were plotting behind my back like Julius Caesar, that's what would get me. Mine is that they're intertwined. Mm. Right. If my wife and we're in a heterosexual relationship goes out with another heterosexual man yeah. and watches the notebook. Yeah. There's sex after. 
Okay, you're not just watching the notebook. Wait, you can't just watch the notebook? No, you're it's gonna cry together, and then your hand is like, wipes a tear, and then it goes onto the breast, and then, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? It's yes. not over, it's still not yes. over. <laughs> That's in the notebook. I've never but, seen the movie. But would it hurt you more to hear they didn't, or, or just had a one night stand, or if they t told each other their deepest, darkest secrets? What would bother you more? I'm bothered all around. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things. Like, I would, like if I found a text that was like, your hair smelled good yesterday, like that would kill me. Because yeah. you know she's that close and like, yeah. lean, now you're picturing her leaning her head and, on and his and shoulder. And emotions are complicated, aren't no. they, Al? They're much more wrapped in. If you're right. physical, it's like, it could be like, oh, a huge, I'm, whatever. Emotionally, the trust there is And I appreciate when you said physical, you smacked your hands together. We got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wham, bam, we're She's good. making the most of her one night stand. <laughs> Very sexy. Coming up on DVL, our interview with the hilarious Marlon Wayans. He's telling us about his funny new Halloween movie. <laughs> and Beyonce teams up with the brand Tiffany. Erica's breaking it all down for us and what Erica's watching. I'm gonna really tickle y'all. Yeah, it doesn't I take much. It. <laughs> You're gonna sit here and okay. be right. I, have, I know y'all gonna be mad at me, but I'm just telling you the truth. You can smirk all you want. You don't have to tell me to go. <laughs> Brad Pitt. <laughs> 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 Oh, so you are, re yeah. So maybe they're listening to me. So Al's gonna read the intro for Marlon Wade to be interviewed oh, yes. yesterday. Funny guy. Yeah, it, you know, the thing about, cause I've uh, worked with him and his brother, I mean, years and years ago when I was an MC at the Miami Improv, but you can see that personality is still there. How many Wayans brothers are there? There's a lot. There's Aren't there a, like 12? There's, oh, it, I don't know. It, I think it's around that. It's but, like a ton of. I think there's a, some girls in there too. Yeah, there's. All brothers. Yeah, I worked with there's Chantel Shanta, Williams yeah. at the comedy store. Is this Shantae or Sh Shantae? Shan yeah. But there's. She was really fucking funny. Yeah, it's, uh, whoops. Wow, there happy Friday. Hey. <laughs> Boom. Hello. Oh, <laughs> she said Yes. Shantae Wayans. Sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. I'm a human being. Shantae Wayans. I apologize. Yes. So you want to drop an F-bomb? Sh Shantae F-bomb? Wayans? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Shantae Wayans. I'm not, not familiar. On. Shantae F-bomb. <laughs> oh, I know her. <laughs> that was bad. Yeah. Uh, I'm very sorry. You know, you know what's weird is I was thinking about that today. Like, why over six seasons has there not been more accidental cursing? And I feel like, dude, I don't, I don't here, think I've ever dropped one. Neither have I. That was I. my first, and it was not on air, kind of. No, don't try and make it. No, better. that was my first in six seasons. I, I'm allowed to be like, good We're job, Tori. Now we still in the club. Yes. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, there we go. Hey, I feel, I feel like that's guys. like when you're at your grandmother's house, like you don't have to be reminded not to like curse around her table. But it's weird because I do a lot express myself sometimes. Mm. What? <laughs> with. I'm sorry? With a. Wrap it up. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the heck out of here. Palmer is making major moves. Tia Mowry shared shocking news, and there's buzz in the Bayhive. In this week's What Erica's Watching. Now first, Kiki Palmer starred in major movies and TV shows for the last two decades. And she recently clapped back at critics who called her part in the movie Nope, her breakout role. Now the 29-year-old multi-talented queen is launching her own digital TV network, Key TV. Take a look. All it takes is one of us to unlock a door to unlock a million doors for each other. I'm so excited to introduce you guys to Key TV, where our stories matter and where we are represented as the keys to the culture. Listen, Sis is taking over and taking notes from Tyler Perry and Oprah, okay? Who she worked with long before her current box office smash. Next, although Tia Mowry and her husband of 14 years, Corey Hardrick, are pulling the plug on their marriage, they 
maintain couples goals. Now Tia posted a message to her followers. She vows to remain friends with Corey despite their differences. Now I hear you sis because you got to keep your business out the shade room. Trust me I know and let yourself have a little setup for a comeback. I know a little something about that too. And Beyonce still has fans waiting for an official music video for her latest album, Renaissance. In the meantime, she's teasing us with this ad for Tiffany. Take a look. I'm a duck, I'm a nurse, I'm a teacher. Dominate is the best way to beat ya. Sorry about yesterday, not the sweet stuff. You were sweet if I come, let me eat ya. The anticipation of a Renaissance music video has some in the hive singing. But before you come for the queen, remember, Sasha Fierce is known for dropping visuals for entire albums when we least expect it. Has it happened yet? Now? Okay, we still waiting, but it's coming, okay? Share with me anything that catches your eye by using the hashtag DBL Erica Watch. We'll be right back. Are you ready for a fresh new... We're in the heat of midterm election season, which means you're probably seeing campaign ads everywhere. One of our viewers, Teresa, had a question about music used in those commercials. Do candidates always need to get permission from musical artists to use their songs in ads? Teresa, let's verify. Our sources are the American Society of Composers, Authors and Publishers, or ASCAP, and Daniel Schacht, a musical law attorney. In the US, music is protected by copyright. If you want to use a song in an ad, you need to get a license. And just like the Grammys have separate awards for the songwriting process and the performance piece of that song, music licenses are similar. There's the copyright to the recording itself. Whoever performed the recording or the record label will own that specific recording. And then whoever wrote the music, there's a comp composition copyright. So the songwriters will typically own that fights and delivers for our district. To use music in a campaign ad or any other video, you've got to get both licenses. ASCAP says to get them, campaigns have to reach out to whoever holds the rights for individual songs. So who is that? Well, it depends. Some musicians hold all their rights. Some share them with labels or co-writers. Others have sold their rights away entirely. If the artist still owns their rights, then yes, a campaign would need their approval to use a song. If they don't own them, it's up to whoever does. So although many artists have a say in who can get to use their music, we can verify, no, candidates don't always need permission from musicians to use their songs in ads. They only need to obtain a license, which can be controlled by anyone. Although it is often the artist. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Welcome back. Halloween is just around the corner and Marlon Wayans is fighting the decorations in his new movie. Now, earlier he told us what scares him and he shared his thoughts on cancel culture in comedy. You guys got to check it out. Marlon Wayans, you already have us cracking up. Welcome to DBL. So Marlon, you have a new Halloween movie and I already told you I'm a huge Halloween fan. I can't wait. It's called The Curse of Bridge Hollow and your character lives in a haunted house. I would actually be okay with that. So we've got to know, do you believe in ghosts? Nah, I don't believe in <laughs> ghosts. I, 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 Cause I, I've been alive for now 50 years. I have not seen one. I want to see one just to be like, yo, are y'all real? Because I am i can't wait to come back as a ghost. I just want to know if it's possible because I got some friends. One died. He owes me like $800. <laughs> so I've been doing seances trying to get that money back. <laughs> Plus interest. Yeah, exactly. Mar you, how about when you shut off like the lights in the basement and you get to the last one? You're not kind of like creeped out? I still am a little creeped out shutting the lights off and running up the stairs. You a grown ass man, what you scared of? <laughs> nah, I ain't scared of the dark. I'm going to the projects, I'm not afraid of the dark. So your character screams though, Marlon, a few times in the trailer. <laughs> but what scares you? You're not scared of ghosts. What scares you in real life? My bills. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Every time I open that envelope, I go, what? 
yeah. yeah. I'm with you on that one. I just use the bills just as a, as a cup holder, you know, <laughs> like especially the American Express ones. You just put a knife, they can, they can, it can drip right through that. <laughs> it's <is> scary. <laughs> All right, now we got to switch gears here because you joined your siblings on in Living Color, obviously to great success, but to earn your spot, you had to write your own sketches. And I used to write sketches on Shaq's show. I used to be so scared to give them to him because he would just give you that Shaq face, like, come on, this is what you got. <laughs> so, like, uh, how were you feeling? Shaq writing? can read? That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> you joking. said it. You're <laughs> joking. Wow. <laughs> You're not scared of ghosts, but I'd be scared of Shaq. Oh, yeah, I know. A little bit. I ain't afraid of Shaq. He's too big. I ain't scared of him. <laughs> so, like, I, where, where was your head at when you had to hand in your first sketches? Were you like, I know this is funny, or you like, I hope? No, I always, um, I think part of comedy is confidence. So when you do it, I believe it comes from somewhere, especially when you're aligned, right? I feel like I don't tell jokes. I have experiences and I meet characters and God just tells me to do the joke. It's all instinctual. So you work your instinct from like day one, then you go on the road and you work your instinct. And so people can't question when you know something's funny. 99% of the times as a comedian, especially when you get skilled, when you know what's funny, it's funny, trust it. And I'll put it in front of the audience and the audience won't lie. So my brother would be like, he would trust us and go, let's see if it's funny. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. But you yeah, know? yeah, man, and well, look, we're, we're funny is funny, but now we're in cancel culture, cancel culture. So, you know, you push the envelope. You, got, you guys did it on Living Color. Do you think that would be acceptable today? How would you, how would in Living Color deal with cancel culture in 2022? Bro, I don't know what world everybody's living in, but I'm not there. I'm always yeah. going to live in my world. I'm always going to be the human that I am. I'm always going to tell jokes like I tell them. And I never do a joke to try and offend somebody. I'm doing a joke to make people um, inclusive of an experience yes. that we can all laugh at. And people are so afraid of comedy right now that I, 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 it makes me go on the road every weekend. And in those theaters, there is no social media. There is no people with all these opinions from different countries that aren't real people right. trying to take away what we, we as Americans have, which is the, 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 um, the First Amendment, right? Which is, you know, our freedom of speech. And I'm gonna exercise that throughout my life. I'm gonna exercise that throughout my, my, my love and just know it comes from a good place and I'm not afraid, cancel me. Cause if I'm gonna get canceled, good. Cause you people that's canceling me wasn't coming to my show anyway. So take your boring Home. I'm gonna it. enjoy the Man. people that well want to hear me. Said. Well Man, said. 2024. Marlin, we need Marlin. you on a presidential ticket. Oh, <laughs> it was so great chatting with you. To our viewers, The Curse of Bridge so Hollow dope. premieres on Netflix October 14th. Thanks, Good Marlin. Stuff. Thanks, Thanks you, stuff, Marlin. Marlin. <laughs> All right, peace, y'all. Promotional consent. Next week on DBL, Dr. Drew Pinsky stops by to join us on the panel live. Plus, we're jam-packed with celebrity guests Danny DeVito, Rita Wilson, Leslie Jordan, and Queer Eyes' Bobby Burke. That's all next week on DBL. You don't want to miss a day. In the weeks leading up to the spookiest night of the year, many local news reporters and police departments warned parents about people potentially tampering with their kids' Halloween candy. And that left parents wondering what could end up in their kids' trick-or-treat bag. From razor blades to needles, even marijuana-laced candy. But is there any truth to these claims? Let's verify. Are legitimate reports of contaminated Halloween candy common? Our sources include four police departments, a criminal justice professor, and the National Confectioners Association. The National Confectioners Association ran a Halloween candy hotline from 1982 to 2012 for police and poison control centers to report contaminated candy in the U.S. In an email to Verify, an NCA spokesperson confirmed they no longer track these reports, but, quote, agree anecdotally that these are typically isolated, rare, false reports and or hoaxes, unquote. Joel Best, a sociology and criminal justice professor at the University of Delaware, has researched reports of Halloween candy tampering in the U.S. dating back to the 1950s. I can't find any evidence that any child 
has ever been killed or seriously hurt by a contaminated treat picked up in the course of trick-or-treating. The Verify team reached out to several police departments across the country that had previously received reports of potentially contaminated Halloween candy in the last decade. Just last month, the Ben Salem Police Department in Pennsylvania confiscated 50 marijuana-laced edibles from a man that intended to sell them within the state. The edibles mimicked popular snack brands. According to Frederick Heron, Director of Public Safety for the Ben Salem Police Department, the incident was not connected to Halloween. Nevertheless, the department warned parents to keep an eye out for these look-alike bags this Halloween. Heron told Verify this warning was out of an abundance of caution. He confirmed that the Ben Salem Police Department hasn't received any reports of contaminated Halloween candy being given to kids in the past. In 2015, police in Winchester, Indiana, received reports about a razor blade found in a candy bar. That same year, needles were reportedly found in Halloween candy in Blackwood, New Jersey. According to local police, both reports were determined to be hoaxes. There are some legitimate claims out there. According to the Waterbury Police Department in Connecticut, back in 2019, a man was arrested after parents found razor blades at the bottom of their kids' trick-or-treat bags. Police confirmed the children were not injured or hurt. Waterbury PD says it is not aware of any incidents prior or since that incident occurred. So we can verify that no, legitimate reports of contaminated Halloween candy are not common. According to the National Safety Council, it's cars, not candy, that pose the biggest threat to kids on Halloween. Their data indicates children are more than twice as likely to be hit or killed by a car on Halloween than any other day of the year. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Day Till. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter helps you distinguish between true and false information by answering your questions. It provides fast facts on trending topics, spotlights major stories, and even includes a daily fun fact for all those trivia buffs out there. Get Verify's fast facts delivered every weekday to your email inbox. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. Welcome back. If you're one of the many people recovering from Hurricane Ian or just someone who wants to help, you could be the newest target for scammers. We have some tips on how to spot them. It's time for your security alert sponsored by LifeLock. First, be on the lookout for imposter scammers. Verify anyone claiming to be a safety inspector, government official, or utility worker. Spot FEMA impersonators charging application fees by downloading the FEMA mobile app to get alerts and information. Don't fall for home improvement scams. Scammers are posing as contractors promising quick repairs or cleanup services. It's a red flag if they ask for cash up front. If your information has been breached, LifeLock is here to help. LifeLock keeps you and your digi digital identity secure from cyber criminals. Call 1-800-953-0836 or visit LifeLock.com to learn more. You know, there's a scam going around Denver. People are calling saying, I don't know if this is happening anywhere else, saying like, hey, if uh, you didn't show up to jury duty, you're going to be charged like $1,500. <sighs> Someone else just gave me a thumbs up. I'm telling you, this is a scam if this is happening in your neck of the woods or whatever. Uh -uh. One of my, we're going to have some credits, but I'll talk over it. So someone in my neighborhood actually paid the money. Shut your mouth. And then my neighbor told me about it. And he's like, I went as far as going like to CVS because they make you go get some like cash form of credit. Oh my God. And they're like, you have to bring it to the courthouse. and they It's like a whole big thing. But be on the lookout for that. If you think you missed jury duty, you probably didn't. You, but did. you probably did. <laughs> yeah, just you don't did. Get to give anybody yeah. any money. You don't have to wow. pay money. Yeah, that's right. Save that money and have a good time this weekend. We'll That's see you guys right. on Monday.